I'm Mike Hancock and I'm a basket maker. I've been taking baskets since 1948 and I started basket making in North Putterton. It was all in North Putterton when I was a young lad. It was all even all the go like it was a very good job in them days like you know and and that was what I was interested in doing so that's why I began. Yeah, and has it changed a lot since when you started? Yeah, well, at the end of the 50s, beginning of the 60s, a lot of the plastic, plastic work come in, like, you know, plastic, and that made the basket-making trade hard. That it, 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 There was a lot of the willow beds was done away with at that particular time, and then you had to get other, like, sort of, I still kept making baskets, but I got other work as well, like, you know, to make a living, and then... And it went, now it's gone right round in a circle. Now it's back, you know, in the last 10, 12 years, it's come right back full bore again. Like, you know, there's plenty of work in that, like, you know. What, what do you think that is? Has it become fashionable? Well, it, people have got used to all the plastics. They got fed up with the plastics and, and that, and they all, everybody want a basket now, and that, that's what it is, like, you know. And you can get, you know, plenty of work in it now. And they, matter of fact, they've even put more woody beds back in and... And, that, and, you know, it's really come back around in a full circle. And, of course, there's not many people as real old basket makers now about because nowadays, like, everybody's on computers. And you can't do this with a computer. You've got to do it with your hands. It's a, you've got to work. Whereas, like, you know, so I've offered several children to come and learn it, but they don't want to learn because the first thing they want to know is how much money they've got to do. And then when they go sit down on the plank all day and... And look at a, a willows all the time. They don't want to do it, so that's why to, you know it's in demand. But we haven't got the people like the youngsters coming on doing it. There is a few like doing the coffins and things like that in the in the other places, but not the smaller type work. Yeah, but do you enjoy it? I enjoy it. Yeah, I really enjoy it. I love it. I'm out here. I'm, matter of fact, I'm now coming seventy seven. I'm still doing it, and I'm still enjoying it. Like you know. I come out here most days and do it, bar of a week, like of a Sunday, I don't, but I'm out to shows and I'm out demonstrations and I do schools and do talks all about basket making and willow. And, and when I do go into schools, the teachers will say to me, well, can't you come back tomorrow and keep them quiet? They've been so quiet, I never know them so quiet, because like, they're interested in what they're doing and that they can do a little bit of hands-on with me, like I take blocks with me and they do a little bit of weaving with me and that, and you know, and it's really interesting. So how easy is it to pick up then? It's not, it, it looks easy, but it's not so easy. It's all right just putting a few willies around a block, but it's a different thing when you sat down and doing it, you know. It takes you a fair few years to learn it. You can learn the basics, but to learn all the different weaves and all the different, you know, baskets and that is a lot more complicated. Whereas now, you get basket makers now and that, you hardly ever see them put a foot on a basket because half of them don't know. They only learned it out of a book. Well, I didn't learn mine out of a book. I sat beside my, my boss for for five or six years learning it. You know, doing all the different, learning all the different things. I can make anything. I'm one of the fortunate ones. I can make any any basket you ask me to make. I've made bloom baskets a lot, but of course they're in the, everybody in. And there's like a lot of them can't do what we call fidge work now. And that's the fancy work, like crossing the woolers up and, you know, over and that, making them all fancy. Well, a lot of can't do fidge work, they just do straight work, but they can't do all the all the things, like, you know, and staying down with baskets and different things, like, you know, so there's a lot, there's a lot more to it than what you think, you know, if you wanted to learn, you know, do it proper, like, you know. So, so going back to 1948 then, it was kind of like, how did you first start learning the trade? Well, I went down, I, I went, like, this boss employed me, like, he had, there was about, there was about 20 basket makers in the shop when I went in learning, because so, in North Pelton, there was a lot of baskets, that wasn't the only shop in Pelton, there were several other shops in North Pelton, but when I went in, the one I went into, there was about 20, 20 of us in there, and I was like a young lad, there was other, a other, few more other young lads that was there, uh, learned, it was like a little, just a year or two older than me, learned it, and that, and, um, and that's how you went, like, you know, you went there and you sat down and the boss would, sit, like, you know, the boss said to me, right, you sit down, and he showed me it. And after, they'd give you, like, a fortnight, three weeks, you know, to get a look at it. And if you're any good at it, you're more right. But if not, you've got to go and get another another job. It didn't like this nowadays, like, you know. You know, you went there and you got, and that was it. 
Did you like coming straight out of school then? Or? Yeah, straight out of school, yeah. Oh, yeah, straight out of school. What, what was that like? Oh, well, it was all right. The hardest part is learning the basket making. It's sitting down on your backside all the time. You sat down with your legs out or, you know, you're not you're not running around like that, looking around and that, and you've got to concentrate. And, of course, in them days, one, the, the, back, the shops weren't warm like they is nowadays. You went in in the morning, you like you had all the wet willow like covered over like in the floor and that, and the floor would heave a little bit. You never had no eat in, and if you said to your boss, "Oh, hello, boss, it's been very hot this morning." No, but you know what you got to do, my son. You got to work a little bit faster. You'll get warm. That is true. Yeah, what he'd say to it, yeah, and that you know and that's how it went. What do you think that um, so many? Because so many people stopped doing it because of the plastics, but why are you one of the few people still carrying it on? Well, certain ones did. There is some, like, you know, I, you know, it's still ca carrying it on, like, you know, but they narrowly sold me because the older ones have, it's happened, poverty has gone, like, but yeah, there is some of them still doing it, right? But there aren't many, what we call real old ones doing it. There is some, but, you know, and that, and that is, of course, and the older people, what was doing it, have all died out, like. You know? Yeah, and it's. Uh, I mean, do you have to take a certain amount of pride in your work though to enjoy it? This is what you get. You got to, you know, we take pride in it, and you know, do your, you know, really get interested in it, and and take pride in it. If you're, if you're just doing it like for say, or burning some money, you just want to forget it. You got to be, you know, concentrate on it, and you know, have pride in what you've done, and have a look at it at the end of the day. And call that looks, you know, like. When I was a lad, after I done it, when I was about seventeen years of age, after I done the few years I done, we used to do a lot of. My boss used to do a lot. He used to get a lot of samples in, and I on a Saturday morning, I used to do all the samples for you know for the, to get the extra work and that because I, I was gifted. He always told me that I was born with a willow in my hand because I was you know I was gifted and could do it proper like you know. And, I was, you know, and I was really good at it, like, you know, whereas some of the lads was good or other people was good, but not exceptional, you know, I mean, you know, be able to put what they call, put their hand to anything, like, you know, because there was basket makers, like, which, what we call that, they was good chair makers, they could, you know, do a chair good, but they couldn't do some accounts of good, but they could make a lovely chair, and that's, that, and that's how it went. And of course, in the days I'm talking about, you had a fishing basket, you had a season for fishing baskets, you had a season for pigeon baskets, so now it's metal ones. Then you had a, a, a season for making what we call salmon traps, for the up on Bristol up on the estuary and that. You'd have a season of that. And then you have a season for making log baskets and uh, picker baskets for going out onto the field for picking up apples, potatoes, and all things like that. You've got your particular seasons, like, you know. And, and that's how it went. And then you get other work, like, sort of in between you was doing, like, a, a, a woman had a clothes basket, you go up to the line, you carry the clothes to the line. Well, then the plastic come in, the clothes, the clothes baskets one wanted, like, you know. But that's how it went. I know, just, um, you just mentioned that you were, you were kind of a natural. Uh, yeah. Is there, um, would you say there's certain characteristics of a good basket maker, like, what do you need to be able to have? Well, you you got to sort of be, like, interested in what you're doing. You know, if, if you're not interested in it, you know, I'm only going to do that. If you're not interested in what you're doing, you're not, you know, you won't make you won't get a good basket. You'll make a basket, but not a good one. But if you're really interested in it and, and take, listen to what the what they're telling you, and, of course, I know a lot of the old boys in, in the basket-making shop, what we say, what I know my parents, and they... they put special attention to me as well because I was gifted and they would tell me different things all about uh, what to do now to get over the easy ways and awkward ways whereas I was get, I was fortunate in that way you see with, with the, the older boys what knowing my parents you know, yeah. you know so uh, do you need um, strong hands like is it strong hands and... well yes you do in a way but not uh, the hardest part is on your side there where you 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 bumping down all the time as you go along. You got a hand arm to use to tap it down, but you know you're going along and you tapping down like that with your hat side of your hand. That to get a bit sore. And in the winter time, you get chaps across the backs of your hands. But if you when you that is by going out to the troll, dipping your wool in the troll to keep them wet. Sometimes you can dry, dip them. But if you come back inside 
and wipe them dry, which you didn't have time in the days, so you, you say, well, what are we messing about doing that? But if you come back and wipe your hands dry in that, you wouldn't get the little chaps across the back. You get little chaps across the back, and you get like little chaps on there with banging, like, you know, hard skin. But you'll get used to it, you know. It's like sitting down all day long. You get you get used to it. You mop on one cheek, then on the other cheek, and, and then you gradually get <laughs> used to sitting down. Is, is there any other health and safety things you have to look out for when you... No, 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 I never, I never, they never told us that, you know, just watch you don't cut yourself, like with a, the knife and that, you know, when you're cutting, you know, your willow out or snipping off, like, you know. The, the, I have got one tool there, it's what they call a picking knife. They always said he's a very dangerous tool, a lot of them don't use that. But I've always used a picking knife and I've never had no trouble with What do you do with the picking knife? You cut all the little ends off the baskets. You know, make the basket finish, the finishing off the basket or the little ends. A lot of them they use the secretaries and nip them off. But I always, the correct tool is what we call a little picket knife. Does it get, kind of give a nicer finish? It gives then? a lovely finish to it, yeah. You know, and makes the end off in the basket more of a slope. Whereas you nipping off with a pair of nips, he's, he's more like sticking out. But with a picket knife, you cut the end off lovely and smooth. Yeah. And also, you talked about. Um, making the, the basket for uh, a, a hot air balloon. Yeah, I made... Is it certain health and safety that you have to think about on that? Or? No, no. I, I made I made one. I, I've got photographs in house of the one I made. That was for Cameron Blooms. That was, that was years ago. So that, that's up in Bristol, is yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, Bristol, yeah. I made one. I went up and seen Cam Mr. Cameron, met him and that, and, uh, and this is when it first started coming out, like, you know, they was baking them. And I made one. I got the photographs in house of it, like, you know, what I made. And I could have carried on, but uh, you got to employ. I was a person on my own, and to make one, you'd have to, have a, you know, you'd have to employ people because it's the very thing. So hills in Bridgewater to do that now. Okay. But uh, I could, I, I made definitely made one. Did yeah. it feel like a bit of an extra responsibility having yeah. to make a basket for someone up in the air? Yeah, no, it, it, it's the time. But you know, you want you've got to, you know, to a hell of a lot of work to it, like you know, getting because. In my, there was a lot of was cane working to it, as well as willow, there was cane and wire. But I was a, when I'm, like I'm a basket maker, so I was always interested in the willow part. Whereas a, a balloon basket, you got so much willow in it, but you also got cane in it as well. And that's a lot of different thing to work, work with, you see, is cane and that. So I wasn't, I wasn't that interested in that, but I didn't pursue it. Like I just thought, no, I, that, that in my... I sort of stick to my baskets, which I can do, and that, like, you know. Have you, have you had to make any other kind of weird kind of... Weird oh, I've things? made all sorts of wild different baskets that people send me photographs of and ask, can I do this and can I do that and I did do it, yeah. All, 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 you know, ever so many different things, like, you know. Well, not like what? Well, I, 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 I bought a basket the other day, uh, a basket that had to be fit in a corner. And there's about five five different angles on it, like a little bit like that, and a little bit like that, and a little bit like that. And I got photographs of that one, you know, where, where they wanted to fit in a particular corner. And, you know, and all angles cut off. And, uh, you know, you get people phone up, like, or ask you, can you do that? And they send you a diagram, you know, and all things like that. But I've still, you know, I've got it, and they've always been all right with it and that. So also one of the things that's changed is you used to be employed by people, now I guess you're self-employed. Self-employed, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm now retired. Yeah, I was self-employed for so long, and then when I come out of retirement, then I just went, like, you know, just jogging along quietly, making a few, like, you know, and doing like that, and doing shows and different things like that, and, like I say, do some schools, do green schools and talk, and, and then do a lot for... Uh, you know, people who, who want to be like for, uh, who's collecting for children in need or, you know, all things like that, like, you know. Yeah, and so when you were self-employed, um, what was the typical day like for you? Oh, I'd start 7 o'clock in the morning, finish 6 o'clock at night. I have an hour for dinner, like that, you know, just to do it like that then, yeah. Uh -huh. I, used to, I used to do a lot then in particular, I had a big order then years ago when I was doing it like that for a firm up in London called Brexton's and they, that was all picnic baskets and they would line them but yet all the picnic baskets had to be a certain size and there were three different sizes like but they would give you an order for well, thousands as I say like you know you, well, you could keep going all the time but Brexton's you, you, if you wanted it you could be working for them only like you know Supplying breakfast, they were the big, 
big firm for doing them, um, like these fancy baskets and like that. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's quite long hours then you used to work. Oh yeah. When I started first, when I started at age of um, age of fourteen, I went to work up past seven in the morning, and then you just get a break at about ten o'clock. Then you work to one o'clock. Then you have an hour's break. And then then you'd work to five. And then when you got a little bit older and got used to it and that, you'd work to six o'clock. And my first wage packet, which I still got in house, was two pound fifty. Was that for a, a day? For a week. Oh, for a week. A week that was. And on Saturdays you'd work to twelve o'clock on a Saturday morning. Then you stop work Saturday mornings at twelve o'clock. And then you'd clean up the shop, what we call the shop where we was all to, to carry that through a door, and all that was burnt. So you was all clean, ready for Monday morning. And what I mean by clean up, all the little snucks and all the lens you cut off. Then, but in the week, the boss would take out so much, like you know, just the highest of it. But on Saturday, you'd all clean up your side of, beside of your plank, sweep it all out the front, pick it up, and you'd allow a half an hour for that. And then you'd finish 12 o'clock, and half past 12, and then you go home, and then you start back Monday morning. So, did you prefer working self-employed or employed? Or did you I, I, I was, I was happy not being employed, because in a lot of people in them days you would go on piecework. What's that? It's piecework. You get, you get so much per basket. Oh. Like all the older blokes, what was in the shop, and that was on what we call piecework. You get so much per basket. He said, "Don't you worry. They're not getting no more than what you was on day work." Uh, you on day work and on piece work. He said, I'll make sure of that. Because he said he wanted me, because we had two girls, you see. And I said, do the staking up like that is there, staking up. And then the girls would do so much. And then I would take it off the girls and Mr. Kirk at the boss. And we'd do what the girls couldn't do, because we had two ladies, like, you know, and they used to come in nine o'clock and work to, say, four o'clock, sometimes three o'clock, whatever, you know. And, and they would help do it, but they couldn't do the bottoms and the bordering so they would do the filling up and that and me and he would do the finishing off. Well they just didn't know how to do those bits. Well it was, it was hard work for them like you know okay. doing it so they used to do like what they could do and then they'd pick off all all the ends and all things like that like you know finish the bath up. We'd do this we'd do the, like the staking up and do the bottoms already they would do the filling up you know and then we'd do the bordering down and then they'd finish off picking off the ends and that like you know you know, different days, like, you know, it's all done different, like, you know. And also, um, is, have you always been in North Petherton? Then? Yeah, lived in North Petherton, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was born three doors from the Globe, down the Globe Hotel, down High Street. Yeah. That's where I was born. And it's, um, also, have you never been tempted to leave Somerset, then? Do you like no, living I, No, I like Somerset, yeah, no. Well, why do you like Somerset? Well, I me mean, life, isn't it, really, you know? We was born here, and I know it all inside out, and out of water, and that, you know? Yeah, so yeah, I like like the pattern. I wouldn't move away from here, like you know. Yeah, and it's um, and then you you were talking about the workshops that you do. Do you, do you get much interest in them? Or? I got matter of fact, I had four people last week and wanted to do a work, have asked me for a workshop so I could come back and do workshops like. But you see, like I tell them when when they want to when I want to do a day's workshop, you see with them like you know, I explained to them. You've got to be able to, what I do is let them make a little round tray, like we call it a little round tray, like, you know, like that. It's like that. I say to them, if you can't do that, you can't do a basket, like, you know what I mean? So you've got to learn the way I say, do a little something small and that. And if you can do that, then I'll tell you if it's worth you going on. But like I say, in a day, it, it's not enough, like, you know, like to, uh, you can tell near enough if anybody's going to do it, but... You know, it's not enough really in the day. Like you know, that's why I say to them, like you know, for the money they got to pay, you got to talk about you can talk on fifty pound a day, each like each pay about fifty pound because time you take your materials and your time and one thing and another out of it, you know, to to the dear thing for them to spend out. But I know a lot of them do do it, but uh, and then the time you um like I say you and you I won't do no more than four. A lot of them do six, and some do eight. But I says no because you can't give them each one individual attention. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you've got eight of you, you're running from one to the other trying to show them up, like, you know, what to do. I won't have that. I'll only do four. And this is why it is 
you know, I don't like doing more, like, you know. I suppose from the nature of your job, you have to worry about quality control. Yeah, and, and telling them, you know, telling them proper, you know. You know, you if you've got too many in a shop, like, you know, just trying to learn for the first day and that, you can't, you can't, you can't do it. Yeah. Well, I know, I've heard certain people who have said to me now, what is training, what I do that, they said to me, oh, are you right, we just too, you can't, you can't cope with so many. But they do, just for the money, like, you know. Yeah. But didn't put on the person who's who's paying, in my opinion. I ask it to that. It's um, I guess it's my final question then. Where, uh, from the workshops you're doing, and everything. Um, where do you see the future of basket making in Somerset going? Well, it's hard to say, you know, because I think it'd be a good job of like if more people came into it, like more youngsters came into it, and you know showed more interest in it, whereas. I know, like different firms have applied for youngsters to come in, it, and hardly any youngsters is coming into it. Like you know, so I would like to see more youngsters paying more, you know, thinking more about it and coming into it. And you know, and, and I think in you know, it's like everything else; it gets it go, it goes around into a circle. And at the moment, I would say this is one of the worst times for a youngster at the moment because of the money. Crunch has gone, gone down. But you've got to work the good with the bad to come back again and circle. There's, there's plenty of work about it. it's basket making now. It's plenty of work, but it's like you know with the money as you understand that the money is is short at the moment on all things. Well, people will, will not buy a basket, but they want the food, won't they? Whereas you get a, in a, say another twelve months time when the country builds back out of this problem, you know, this bit of trouble we're in. You'll get everybody back again, but you know that's how it goes, like you know.